Okay, let's see what it means when we say that the basis functions in the Fourier transform are orthogonal. So here's the Fourier transform equation, and I like to think of this uh, in relation to uh, a equivalent sort of vector scenario. So in vectors, uh, let's say we had two basis vectors which are at 90 degrees because they are orthogonal, uh, perhaps E1 and E2, and if we had a vector x, then we could find the projection of that vector x in the direction of E1, and this we might call x maybe these are vectors, we draw lines under them for vectors, uh, we call this x1, and this equals the vector x dot producted with the basis vector e1. And in the other direction, uh, we would get a vector, which we might which call x2, uh, I mean the, the length of that vector is x2, uh, and that length is x vector dot producted, or projected, into the direction of E2. And this vector example is analogous to what's going on in function space. So over here we can see we have our signal x and it's being multiplied by the function at a particular frequency. This is a complex sinusoid at frequency omega. We're multiplying these like we're doing the dot product in the vector space and then we're integrating over all values of time for that function. So we're adding up the area under this function, the multiplication, the projected function. So we're taking x and we're projecting it onto the basis function, this sinusoidal basis function. And we're going to do it for all different values of omega. So every different value of omega, that's a different frequency, each one of these is a different basis function. So we do it for omega 1, omega 2, omega 3 and so on, for all the different values of omega. Now what does it mean to say that these basis functions, so this is what we call our basis function, what does it mean to say that these basis functions are orthogonal? Okay, I like to think of waveforms, it helps me to visualise things, uh, so let's rewrite this as uh, in its form with uh, causes and signs because they're easier to think of in terms of, uh, base, uh, in terms of functions. So e to the minus j omega t equals cos of minus omega t plus j of sine minus omega t. And because cos is an even function, this equals cos of omega t. And because sine is an odd function, this equals minus j sine of omega t. So we can replace this in our equation up here, and we can see that we're going to have our Fourier transform is it can be rewritten as the integral from negative infinity to infinity of cos omega t uh, times uh, xt, so xt times cos omega t minus xt times j sine omega t. Okay, so it has a real part here, a real projection, we're projecting xt onto the cos waveform, and then a complex part where we're projecting xt onto the sine waveform. Now I'm just going to look at the real part because uh, everything else follows for the complex part. And just before we do that, we just make one uh, note to the side that I just want to remind you and, and have you think for a minute about what this function is. So what's the integral from minus infinity to infinity of just simply cos omega t dt? Now what is that? Well this is a cos wave form uh, which we can plot out here. So it's a cos wave form that goes forever in time domain and also negative time. And this integral here we're asking ourselves what is the integral means the area under the curve, so this is asking for adding up the area under the curve over all time. So here's the area under the curve, and I think you can see if you're doing it for all time, from minus infinity to infinity, all of the positive areas will cancel all the negative areas. And if you go from negative infinity to infinity, this will always be the case. For every positive area, there'll be a negative area, so this equals zero. 
And we're just going to use that later to just remind yourself that the integral of simply cos over all time equals zero. Now over here we've got x times cos. Now that's what, something we're going to think about. Now let's return to our question, why are these basis functions orthogonal? What does it mean for them to be orthogonal? So to test this out, well let's see, and we're thinking of this vectors in here and projecting, let's see what would happen if we project one of the basis functions into the direction of the other. Okay, so let's for a moment uh, think about this Fourier transform here, and let's think about it at the basis function omega b. So I'm just going to put a subscript b on the omegas here. Okay, and so we're only looking at omega b, which is the basis function omega b. And let's take the signal, another basis function, let x equal another basis function, and we're going to project that onto omega b and see what happens, see what it means to be orthogonal. So let's pick omega 1. So we're taking a basis function omega 1 and we're going to project it onto the omega b basis function. So it just means put cos omega 1 t into this equation. So I'm just going to write out the real part of this. Uh, the imaginary part follows, as we've said, you can do the imaginary part yourself. So inside here is cos omega 1 t times cos omega b t. And this can be written as one half cos of omega one plus omega b t plus one half of cos omega one minus omega b t. Okay, so this real term here, this part here, is of taking one basis function and projecting it onto another basis function. That's what we're doing here. Uh, equals this formula here. We integrate this from negative infinity to infinity over time and let's see what we've got. Well we've just this first term here it's just a cos waveform at the frequency omega 1 plus omega b. So it's just a cos waveform at that frequency. And we already know and we remember here any cos waveform at any frequency, any particular frequency, if we integrate that we'll get zero. So as long as omega 1 plus omega b does not equal zero, as long as they're not the same, uh, or as long as they don't cancel each other, then this equals zero. And this term here, as long as omega one is not the same as omega b, and we were testing one basis function projected onto another, so we're doing omega one does not equal omega b, uh, as long as they're not the same, then this also is just a cos waveform added up over all time, at the frequency omega 1 minus omega b, so we're adding it up at the area all time, that also equals zero. So the fact that, so what we see is one basis function projected onto another basis function gives zero. And that means there's zero contribution in the Fourier transform for one basis function projected onto the other, and that means they are orthogonal. That's the definition of orthogonal. And in signals and systems, that's what we mean by orthogonal. It means if you multiply them together and add them up over all time, those functions, if they have come out to be zero, then they're orthogonal. So we've actually shown here that the basis functions of the Fourier transform are orthogonal. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos and uh, like this video. Uh, it helps others to uh, share uh, in the videos and to find them more easily.